the Ryder Cup has returned. Reed T. Fowler and Jeff Ulrich have returned. They know a lot about golf. They love the Ryder Cup. PGA Tour, high or low? Are the opening odds for the Ryder Cup too high? So too long or too low, too short? Uh, let's look at the team aspect here of the competition. Team USA, once again, has the best golfers in this competition, but we all know that doesn't mean anything. Uh, minus 200 favorites against Europe. Are those odds too high or too low, Reed? Uh, I think it's a little too low. I think maybe like minus 150, minus 175. And why I'm saying to bake that in is you take a look at, you know, how they fared with the talent like they have on this team right their average world ranking guys is ninth amongst their players it's like 30th for team europe so you have that baked into it but the big thing is can these guys all get along for one week jeff I, that that is a big thing right because the last three out of the or four of the last five Ryder cups have been won by team europe and it's not like you know we've been short in the u and in the u.s on talent we have guys like look or nine like nine of the top 11 players in the world ranking are on the Ryder Cup team. So I, I'd say that it's a little too low right now, but I get why it's there. Just because Team like team Europe just plays so well. You got to pick in the experience. The guys like Poulter, Sergio, Paul Casey, those guys are too good in this in this type of format. Uh, the team chemistry aspect, Jeff, is that going to have an impact here on uh, your betting approach? Yeah. 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 Um, the, the, to answer Reed's question, yeah, these odds are way – to low seven of the last nine europe has won the Ryder cup and they've embarrassed the states every year every year of those nine events europe has been at a talent deficit i would actually argue this year yep. they're at less of a talent deficit i don't care about the world rankings now they've got guys like sneaky guys like um, hovlins on the team people probably forget it's like why isn't he playing for america and then you've got shane lowry playing some of the best golf of his life no this format is terrible for the Americans. Absolutely terrible. They all go about, they're kind of mini superstars in the United States. They're mini celebrities. They go about individual. They're used to doing their own thing, searching for those big paychecks. And then they got to come together for one week and, and put us all that aside. No, they've been terrible at doing that for the last two decades. Europe has been great at doing that exact same thing, the, the complete opposite. And now you're getting plus 200 to bet the euros. Absolutely. This this line on the Americans is way too low. It should be closer to even if we're being dead honest. But the talent deficit, I guess you can make the say that the Americans should be the, the small favorites here. But at minus 200, way too low. And Jeff, I will say this too, like the format for like European team, you have different countries all coming together, right? You would, you would argue that that would work against something like Team Europe. But... But like you mentioned in the States, they're on their little silos and, and I'm like, this is how look, we routine. Just, just yep. to beat this home point, the States didn't even take their best match play players. Billy Horschel, Kevin Kisner, Kuchar, like Patrick past Reed. winners. Yeah, the, the Captain America. Kuchar, but yeah, anyways. I know there's a lot of focus on the, the Brooks uh, Bryson aspect. And we all remember the disastrous Tiger Woods Phil Mickelson pairing like uh, years ago. That was at uh, Oakland Hills. That sunk the team before it even left the port for crying out go, loud. Hell, son. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> all right, let's look at some individual props here, dudes. There is a prop here for top combined point score. Justin Thomas is the favorite for that, plus 800. Too high or too low, Jeff? I mean, it, again, it's too low. I mean, I kind of like Justin Thomas. Um, I, I mean, again, he's got he's he's really performed well in these in these events for the states. I mean, sometimes when the team hasn't shown up. He's shown up, had a really good President's Cup. But, like, where has his putter been over the last couple months? Uh, it, it's been non-existent. It's really hampered him to get in contention at the playoffs. And now you're expecting to just, what, sink all the putts against a really, really, like, gritty Euro team? No thanks. I mean, plus 800, um, it's decent odds. But I, I think you got to go down the board here. Personally, I would look more to the Euro side as well. I think the one thing about taking the top points score on an American side, they're so deep with talent. If Justin Thomas can't take a putt in his first foursome, maybe he gets sat, and then those points aren't going to be there. Whereas guys like Rory, who I really like at plus 1,000, um, he's playing all the matches because, like, they don't quite have that deep a bench, right? And if Rory gets hot, I mean, he, he will get hot. So I'm not really too big on Justin Thomas at plus 800. I think those odds are too low. I'd rather look to the Euro guys at uh, bigger odds. Uh, Rita, it's looking like John Rahm has the same odds there, plus 800. Xander's plus 900, along with uh, Jordan Spieth. 
Yeah, I think uh, I'm right here with Jeff too. Is when you when you're looking at this, you need to pick the guys who are going to be in all five matches, right? That is the first and foremost. That that that's just how you're going to get to that. And a guy like JT can definitely be that guy, right? He's a Tita Green, uh, you know, Maven. He's a guy that can hit it far. He's great with his wedges. But to Jeff's point, that putter has not been there, especially on Pete Dye courses over the last 24 rounds. He's like 22nd amongst these, like you know, the the 24 players that are going to be here. Uh, competing and that's that's not great it's not great bob if you want to do that if you want to get on those greens a guy like polter right polter is someone that you want to take a look at on the european side which we'll get to in a little bit but yeah i'd rather go deeper on the u.s side if i have to and i know you guys think i'm doing a homer pick but a guy like tony fino plus 1000 mm. he's another player that could match up with all the type of players on the team maybe he gets in four matches and he gets you four wins that's something that i'd rather get on the american side because they're so deep uh, Reed, you mentioned like guys who are going to play in all uh, all the events. Have like the pairings and all that stuff. When does that schedule come out? That comes out like later this week, right? So, later this week, yeah. Okay, cool. Just wanted to give everyone a heads up there. John Rahm was about uh, fifth on the board a, a couple days ago, but now he is tied. He is uh, tied with Thomas, as I mentioned, plus 800. So are, are, for Rahm here specifically, are those odds too high or too low? I mean, I, I think they're too low. Um, uh, look, like he's the best player in the world. Um, but, and look, he's, he's going to be in all these matches. He really, he really is. And I maybe maybe I'm making the case that like, I like Rom to be the top point scorer because he was eighth at Kiwa. He was ninth at the players. Those are both uh, Pete died courses, but I don't know. Like, like I mentioned with these type of things, you want to get some of these guys that are a little bit deeper on the board. I think Victor Hovland, like Jeff mentioned, is someone that could definitely get there because he has the archetype, the type of game to do well at whistling straights. He hits the ball a mile and he's been putting a lot better. So I love Rom. I think he's going to be in all these matches, but give me someone like a guy like Victor Hovland deeper. Uh, Jeff, didn't he just miss the cut in uh, Napa? Yes, he did. <laughs> last week? Yeah, but he, he did have that stomach illness. And he yeah. did. He said the reason I didn't play like the program, he's like, I could have played the program, but I would have made a lot of stops Honestly, at the restroom, you know? Europe is so cerebral at this event. I think they sent John Rom to the, to, to the West. <laughs> he missed the cut there on purpose to give the I'm not kidding when I say this. I swear to God, I think Euro did made John Rahm miss the cut there on purpose. That's just a conspiracy theory. I said be be careful, what? Americans, before getting too confident here. This is this Euro team is crafty. But uh let's talk about the odds. Yeah, I I think the odds are more appropriate for Rom. I mean, he, I think he's got a very good shot of playing all five matches, probably a better shot than JT, which I think makes him a better bet there. But I'm completely with Reed here. I think Hovland is a very, very good target at plus 1,400, almost double the odds of Rom. Hovland is such a talent. I think if he gets hot early on in this event, he will be out there for all five events too. I also like Rory, like I said. Um, I feel very confident that like Rory and Hovland are going to have a very good shot of playing five matches, whereas, again, you're looking at the American side. It's just so deep that they could just mix and match so much, and they could really try and give guys a break, and, and you just lose out on that one match. So... I would rather target the American in this, the, the, sorry, the Euros in this prop, this player prop for top uh, combined points score. And I think Hovland probably offers you the best value there, plus 1,400. All right, and so I know you're going to target the Europeans, as you just mentioned, but what about our guy Bryson DeChambeau, plus 1,200 to be the top combined point scorer at the Ryder oh, Cup? Like, is, is that something worth chasing? Like, those odds too high, too low? You can get some value there. What do you think, Jeff? I, I don't even know what odds you said, but they're definitely too low. I think I think you said plus <laughs> Plus 1,200. I mean, look, uh, again, we bring it back to, like, the President's Cup. This guy lost a team match to byung Hun An and, and, and Adam Scott. Uh, he lost, um, you know, to, he, he's, he lost to Alex Noren in the last Ryder Cup. He halved with Adam Hadwin. These aren't, like, these aren't elite golfers I'm throwing out here, the name. So that's kind of my point here. This guy's struggled in match play. And I love Bryson. You know, he's got an intimidating game off the tee. Maybe whistling straights is just like he just fits it right in and, and he just gets on a roll. Could definitely happen, but no, man. This is just not a guy I definitely want to chase in this format, unfortunately. Um, hope he turns it around. I really hope he has a positive event because there's just so much negativity about him. But um, yeah. this is not uh, a player I want to chase in the match play. And he's, and he's going to be the center of attention all week. He, he is the sport's lightning rod. And he was making headlines for a decision to put in two a days for the long drive world championship, which he's going to be competing in the day yeah. after the Ryder Cup. Uh, yeah. Reed, 40, uh, Reed, 45 seconds to go in the show. What do you think about his odds here? Yeah, I mean, talking about conspiracy theory, what if he plays all five matches because he's the lightning rod that this team needs? I doubt yeah. it. But if that's the case, then these odds are pretty nice. 0-3 in 2018 for Bryson. 
in his matches, zero points. And so that scares you quite a bit. Love the guy. I think he's great for the team, but I don't know. I just can't take he's, these. He's never won a team match in running. Never won a team match. history. <laughs>